Hi, George here. In Adobe just released their new Adobe Photoshop Elements for 2025. Let's take a look through this and see what the new features are. First off, let me show you where you can find this. Of course, you can always find new versions over at amazon.com. If you want to get this straight from Adobe, let me show you where you'll find that. That's also where to go if you want to get the upgrade, which is about 20 bucks less. And it's right here, adobe.com. As usual, it's relatively hidden. We like talking about Photoshop and not Elements. So scroll clear to the bottom, left-hand side, Elements Family, right there, click on that. And here we go, here's where you'll find everything about the new Adobe Elements 2025. This includes the Photoshop Elements, which is an upgrade price right now of about 80 bucks, normally about 100, and Premiere Elements, same thing price-wise, and it's 150 for both of those together. Also, if you want to test it out and see how it's going, let's just come down here all the way down to the bottom, way down here, and you can get a download free trial of either Photoshop Elements 2025 or the Premiere Elements 2025. Now, both of these are just one week, seven day free trial. But you can give it a shot. Make sure it works on your system before you buy it. Okay, let's go over and take a look at this. Here we go. Now, there are several new features in here. A couple things have been updated. The main new feature that they're talking about is an AI feature, and it's an AI remove feature. And for that, I'll bring up this picture. I did a whole video about this oh, a couple of years ago where we took out all the people in the background using the clone stamp tool. So my clone stamp videos, not a difficult process, but it takes some time to do that. This is a good use for this new feature. Go over here under enhance and right here where all of your standard healing tools are. This is your spot healing brush and the healing brush tools are right here and the new remove tool. I'll leave this at the size of 90. You can do several strokes and remove after each stroke. That's fine. First, make a duplicate of your background there. Always a good idea, it's a safety. And then go over here and just paint over what you wanna get rid of, like that. And then Elements goes in, figures it out, and takes it out. Now you'll say here, this is pretty easy, they're just on sand, not a big deal. Let's take a look up here where they're actually on some kind of a background thing, we'll do that. Not too bad, it's not an exact match, but it's not bad. Let's do this corner right here. Again, not bad, I missed the corner a little bit. Let's just do this over here, that looks good. Now, in my video on this, using the clone stamp tool, I think I spent about 10 minutes on this to get this whole area cleaned up. This is just taking us just a few seconds. As you can see, if I wasn't talking, it'd be going even faster. There we go. So great for this kind of job where you're taking things out of the background and they're not touching anything important. It does a really good job. It's a little bit weird right back here. I'd probably go back in and fix that area there with the clone stamp tool, kind of get rid of some of that repeating oddness, but it still does a good job but it's not perfect. It's not a perfect AI tool. And I can show you that story here. This is something which I did years ago, one of my first project videos here on YouTube, taking out this chair and this boot. This is the chair up here. There's my background copy. And I'll come in here, just grab right against the edge of the kid like this. And let's just do that whole chair right there, just like we did the people in the background before. Come around, get this whole thing in here, let go, and not a good job at all. There's his eye, here's the toe from the boot over here. So you can see what it's doing is it's basically doing a standard content aware fill, grabbing stuff from elsewhere in the picture and trying to match it up and it did a lousy job on the lines in here. So sometimes it's great, like over here, and sometimes it's not like over there. But that's kind of typical with any tool, although I would have expected better here with an AI tool that should have figured out those lines and done a good job on the lines. It really kind of messed that up. Won't save that. But for this kind of a background fix, this would save you a lot of time for cleaning up just basic stuff in the background. So a nice tool for that. Something else that's new here that's also talked a lot about is the quick edits right over here and textures. Now these textures are kind of odd. I don't really use them for anything, but if you like the texture, you click on a texture and it puts that texture on top as an overlay on your image. Kind of nice if you're doing stuff in blog posts and things, or you're doing Instagram posts, it's kind of good for that. And in here, this used to have 10 images. In 2025, they've added in 20 more, and here's the original 10 right there. So this now has 30 textures instead of 10 textures. So that's good, giving you more texture to work with. I have no problem with that. We'll come down to quick actions. Something else which is new in here, down here, this new section, add motion, and there are four motion overlays you can put on top of your image. Just click on the sparkles overlay. We've seen this before, over in the advanced mode, but it's now here in the quick actions section. This little overlay thing's happening, that's fun. So let's cancel that one. So you have four of these motion overlays that are now added in motion and motion graphic overlays added into the quick actions section. Again, real nice if you just wanna do things quickly, 
Let's go up to Guided. There's something new over here in Guided, and it's kind of a little and a big change at the same time. And that's up here. Look at our sections, and right here, this used to say Photo Merge. It now says Combine. We'll open this thing up. In the Combine option over here, this used to be Photo Merge Combine. It's now been changed to Combine Photo. So it really is a new tool, but that does the same thing. We still have our exposure, group shot, and panorama. Notice though that we are missing a couple things in here. We're missing photo merge faces, and we're missing the photo merge scene cleaner. The scene cleaner was a good tool. I wish they had left that in here. I don't know why they removed it. There's no reason to take anything out, but they did. So faces is gone, and scene cleaner is gone. And we now have the combined photos. Let's take a look at this. I just opened up these two pictures right down here. Here's a picture of a girl with a jacket on and a sunset picture. Let's take both of these, hold the control key down and choose them both. And then we'll go into combine photos and they're brought in here as separate layers. As you can see right there, there's our background. Here's our foreground. You can see your layers right here where it says show layers. And here's your layers on the right hand side. The first thing I want to do here is just to change the format. Let's make this a square format one by one. Click on that and then I'll zoom out a little bit up here. There we go. Now she's a bit too small, so I'll put her up here like this, grab this control handle, bottom right hand corner, pull her down and make her a better fit. That's pretty good right there. Let's go back over here to layers. Let's hide her layer and let's show this one and then we can then come in here and adjust this size. I'll just stretch it clear down to the bottom like that and move the sunset over to that side. And that's pretty good right about there. Let's bring her layer back up again and hide those layers. All right, so our positioning is now taken care of. Layers, show layers, make sure that layer is selected and that is, that's correct. Let's now come down here, bottom right hand corner. You can import more images right here and do more layers if you want to. But just go straight over here to edit. And edit, you have two options. You can extract an object or you can remove a background. I want to remove the background of this layer. So click on remove background and elements will go in and figure this out and find the background and take it out. It does a pretty good job with that. It's not great, it's a bit rough around the edges. I could do a much better job over in the advanced mode, of course. If you want to, you can come in and adjust your edge a little bit right here. We have some brushes, reveal and hide, basically show and hide, but we'll leave it as is. If you're happy with that, come down, click on done. You can change your blend mode. We don't need that here, but the colors are off. She's kind of washed out and she's not as orange as the background. Let's see if we can adjust that. Bottom right hand corner where it says match tone right here. Click on auto match color tone. We'll let Elemis go through and figure this out and see what it comes up with. It kind of made it just a little bit darker, but not much. Now you can adjust your saturation, contrast, temperature, and luminance up here. I'm not that happy about this because there's no real references in here. You can't tell where the temperature is, blue to orange, yellow, whatever it is. We don't know. You just have to guess on that. I'm going to move the temperature here to the right just a little bit. I know what this is going to do, and you'll find it kind of surprising. Now these are real slow. Whenever you make any move here, you have to sit here and wait for it to go ahead and make that adjustment. So they're not as fast. There you go. Just awful, as you can see there. The actual setup is way down here someplace. I had to try that a few times already to figure this out. Again, there's no reference point in here on temperature. We don't have any color temperature reference. So all you can do is just guess and do adjustments and then wait for it each time. Again, very slow on these controls in here. So this part of this, I think, is pretty much useless. But if you just want to cut out an image quickly, remove the background and reposition, it's pretty fast at doing that. Now, when you're happy with everything, come down here, click on done, and this takes you over into the regular advanced mode. And we can then use all of our advanced tools to color balance anything else you want to do in here, maybe even fix some of this edge in there. But for what you get, it's not really that much. I can do a faster job and a better job here using the standard advanced mode tools. So as far as guided edits go, I already missed the scene cleaner. That was a great tool. And I think the combined photos tool here is basically useless. This is just better over in the advanced mode. A little thing that's new is up here. In 2024, there was a button right here to change between light and dark modes. All that button did was open up the preferences. You know, then change it over in preferences. I thought it was a silly button. They've removed that and they've replaced this up here with a new notifications tab. And I think this is a good idea. So that's a useful tool. Again, little thing, but I think that's worthwhile. Over in the file menu, there's a new option right here, open from mobile. Now this will bring up right here a QR code. It'll go to the app store, either Google Apps or Mac, depending upon what you're using. You can then take a picture of this with your phone. It will take you to that store and allow you to download the mobile app onto your smartphone and then connect 
your images from your smartphone to here or from here to your smartphone. And this is still a beta program and I've seen some problems, for instance, it doesn't like my smartphone. But that's really all it does is it just helps you set up the Elements mobile app. Now, because it's a beta app, I don't really want to talk much about that. I leave beta stuff alone. And once this becomes a regular full-fledged app, I'll then do full training on that. But while it's still beta, too many things can change. So I'll just leave that one alone. Same thing down here under the Elements web. Let's bring this up. In this right here, this allows you some web-based access to just a few things that you can do. Basically, you got it edits. There's a new one here for photo text. And the peek-through overlay has been here for a while now, so that's not really new. So it's mostly useful for people who are doing a lot of social media work. So you're doing a lot of stuff through their phone, doing a lot of stuff through a tablet, and they want to have some fast things to do that with. And it's pretty good at doing that. But again, this is still a beta program, so I won't be doing a whole lot of talking about that. I'll leave the beta stuff alone. Okay, I brought up a new picture here. Let's take a look at that depth blur. We saw it first over here under quick, and it's right here under the AI edits, depth blur. You can also find it in the advanced mode, and up to filter, come down to blur, and depth blur right there. So click on that, bring that up. What this does is it goes through, it analyzes your picture, it tries to figure out what's foreground and background, and then it gives you a blur to kind of push the background stuff further into the background. Okay, it's analyzing it right now. And it does a pretty good job, but it's not perfect. We can tweak it and make it even better. I'll show you how to do the tweaking in just a second here since it finishes the analyzing. And there we go. Did a lot of blurring in the background. Not so much right back in here. Foreground looks good. Now the problems with this one, there's a couple of things. The area over here should be blurred a little bit and it's not, but I can ignore that. And in here, this arm is blurred, this hand is blurred, and this arm is blurred, and those shouldn't be blurred. Personally, I'd like to have these people back here a little bit more blurred out. And you can do that over here on the little choose focal point. And this is done right inside here. I prefer it if this was done on your image here, but it's done over here, this little thumbnail. So you choose where you want to have your new focal point and you click on that. When you re-choose a focus point like this, it does more blur in the background. It pushes them a bit further back and that's better. It's not perfect yet, but it is better. We can go over here. We can now adjust the focal range. Let's put it to the side a bit. Notice that they're a bit closer in now. Let's go way up here, even closer, more towards the left. They're further back, more blurred. So this controls foreground and background blurring. And then your blur strength is right down here. Go to the right and you get more of a blur. And left, you get less of a blur. And we can find a spot in here where the background is blurred just about right. And I think right in here is pretty good. And by controlling these, then a little bit of blurring in here makes more sense. They don't look quite as bad as they did before. So real nice, does a real good job of this. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close, allowing you to do this kind of a foreground, background, depth of focus effect. So I think on this one, I give it maybe a B. Let's just see how this looks. Here's our before, and here's the after. My only problem on this is that this part of this guy right in here is not as blurry as it should be compared to everything else. I would blur him out just a touch, but that could be touched up over in the advanced mode if you wanted to, if you really cared that much about that. But again, interesting tool, and I think it does a reasonably good job. Click on OK. Takes us into advanced mode, and notice here we have two layers now. Background layer, and here's our depth blur layer, which means I can come in and do a bit more work on that if I wanted to. Okay, let's move on and take a look at our next new feature. Okay, one more new feature to talk about here, and this is a change color tool. Now just open up an image that we used previously for a change color video. Let's see how this works. As always, let's go over here, right click and duplicate layer, choose okay. There we are, and then enhance. And right here, change object color. Brand new tool. And with this tool, we'll select our color area. We can use the auto selection or quick selection or a selection brush or the magic wand. And with this tool, you come down and choose a selection tool. I'll use the lasso tool. Let's just go right around the jacket in here. And we'll see how well this does with the auto selection. Come around here and over in here. Let's just skip those earrings. And up this side. Again, skip the earrings right there. And back to the beginning again. There's a selection that did a pretty good job. It messed up here, it messed up right up here, and it messed up right in there. Everything else is pretty good. We can clean that up. Let's just change this here to subtract. And I'll use the polygonal lasso tool. Let's just remove this little bit right in here, like that. And let's just take this bit out right over here. 
Here we go, just basic standard selection stuff, nothing we haven't seen before in different parts of Photoshop Elements. There's our basic selection. Now the new trick over here is the change color to. I'm going to click on the color in here. Brings up the standard color picker. You can choose a new color from this and there is our color change. And this did a real nice job. Nice and clean along those edges. Down here, as you recall from this video that we did previously using a different technique, it was kind of tricky to get these edges right up in here and up in here nice and clean against that white. And it did a really good job about that. She's okay. You can also change your blending mode here from color to multiply to screen. We'll use color and adjust our lightness up in here so you can get a lightness shift if you want to. You also can refine your color area with the hide and reveal brushes. This is our after. Right down here, here's before. There's after. And this tool, I like it, does a very good job. It messed up a little bit right here on the earring. But aside from that, real good job. Let's come down and click on OK. And notice that this comes in as a whole bunch of layers over here. We have our layer mask on top. This is masking a group. Inside of the group, we have the color layer right here. And we have levels here and color right down here. Now, because this is in a group like this, I can go up here to this layer mask, zoom in on that spot here, clean the layer mask up and make that perfect. So this is a tool I really like. I think this is a great tool, possibly the best tool so far inside of Photoshop Elements for changing colors. And again, that's right up here under the Enhance menu. And right here, Change Object Color. Very good tool. And there's one more change that we have to talk about. And that isn't about the program itself, but it's about purchasing the program. And this is important, I think, for my audience here on YouTube. And that's if they put a time limit onto the program, which is very unfortunate. Let's go back over to the web. And we're back in here on the Elements page. There we go. Let's just scroll down right here. Here's the important part. This now has a three year term license. So you're no longer buying it for lifetime access. It's now going to stop working after three years. Now for me, not a big deal. I upgrade every year anyway. I normally recommend that you upgrade your program every three or five years, just so you stay relatively current on the operating system. If Windows gets updated or the Mac gets updated, that happens all the time. At some point, you'll begin to see errors happening in Elements. So being relatively frequent on getting your upgrades is not a bad idea. But I don't like being forced into that. So I think this is a big deal. And I know for a lot of you who watch me here on YouTube, this will be a deal breaker here for Photoshop Elements 2025. So there we go. That's a look around at the new features here in Photoshop Elements 2025. I pointed out the things that I like a lot, the things that I don't like so much. And I think that three-year limit could be a deal breaker for a lot of people. If you're brand new to Photoshop Elements, it's still a great program. This version is still better than the last version. That's always the case. Each new version is just a little bit better than the previous version. And I have no problem recommending this program. But if you're on a budget, then that three-year license might be an issue. Now, if you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, I have complete training for that. You'll find it over on my website, howtogurus.com. And I'll be coming out with my training course here for 2025 in just a few days. Make sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you next time.